New York Comic Con has a very special place in my heart. Every year I look forward to Comic Con. The community is awesome. People are super friendly. It's like you can just be yourself. It's very exciting to see other people. It's, it's really, really special. Fun. I mean, I feel like we kind of speak a it, it, it took a while before here. I realized that I wasn't alone in the world. It's a hundred worlds in one. It's just home. I actually saw you read Artemis here in New York oh, right. a few years ago. Oh, That was so great. And I'm so glad you did that. You did such an excellent job. Oh, thank you so much. Right. And then, funnily enough, on the original Wonder Woman property that I worked on, I voiced Artemis. And Harry Russell was the voice of Wonder Woman. And then after that, several years ago, they ended up inviting me to play Wonder Woman. And I've been doing her voice now for a few years and some of the other major storylines of the other characters. And then this is the first one I held out all these years to get her story out there again in a big way. So it's really fun. For you, the, yes. what is the power of playing Wonder Woman? And in this movie in particular, on top of everything you do, the character in general, but also this movie as the next step. Yeah. What's your view of I mean, it's interesting because it's been uh, several years, right, of, of, of voicing this character. And then since then now, the films have come out, um, the live action films with Gal, and it's, you know, just taken it to a whole other level. And in general, I think comic book filming and sort of the representation that's been expressed in them has really just taken it up a notch. And I just am grateful for me to be a part of that whole journey for, in so many different ways, you know, like. I worked with Frank Miller on Sin City. He's a big reason with the Dark Knight series as to why we started really looking at Batman in a completely different way in the psychological makeup. You know, the stories of like Neil Gaiman that I grew up with that I love so much. The Sandman series is what inspired the short film Death that's coming out here with Bloodlines. You know, voicing this character for so many years, it's the seven five year, you know, anniversary. My grandmother loved this character, my mom. But now with the films and where we are right now with everything from Time's Up to just like, you know, Captain Marvel and just like these different females being centered, we're doing this story of bloodlines where it's mostly female centered. It's all a lot of female characters, even on the good side and the bad side, that are getting explored and they're just really getting their due in time and I just saw there's a cute little dog. <laughs> And, um, you know, and so it's just, I think it's just really great because now I have a daughter who's a teenager and I'm able to share this love that I have for her, um, you know, for, these, for this world that my uncle got me into because my uncle Gustavo Vasquez, he's a comic book artist, and, um, and pass it on to her, but in a way that's really appropriate for her generation and with the messaging that she really needs to hear and to see how these iconic stories have been adapted generation to generation and evolving, I think is really critical and powerful and a really great way to see how we've evolved as a culture, you know, from go-go gadget, belt, Batman, to where we are now. I think it's pretty cool. So, so, so tonight after the screening and with everything you just said, yeah. what, is, what is the message that you want the audience to take away from it, especially um, the young women uh, that will be in attendance tonight? Yeah. I think what's really um, amazing that's explored in the story, because it again is that it's that iconic story, you know, the mascara, Steve leaving and going to America and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think what's really powerful about it is that a lot of what Wonder Woman has to deal with in this film is the reality of what her mere presence creates. And even with the best intentions, conflict and confrontation are created. And how do you deal with that? and um, your own complicity in, 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 in the negative situations around you. And I think those are the kind of nuances and complexities that we're allowed to explore now. And we're, we're just mature audiences and we've been in a lot of ways and our conversation on everything from mental health and beyond has just really evolved societally. So when we see these different films, we want to see that better adapted and explored in this. And I think that's going to be an interesting thing for folks when they watch this. You yeah. talked about a lot of the like relationships between you're next, you're next. women. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about um, like the relationships between women. There's so many in this one. What relationship do you think was just like the the thing that you got so much out of? 
it was it just one? For me, I mean, it always goes back to Hippolyta, her mom. You know, like I'm very close with my mother, and I'm very close with my daughter, and you know, I was very close with my granddaughter, my granddaughter, my grandmother. <laughs> 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 But you know, uh, you know that's an interest. That's that. That's that first female relationship we have in our lives, and it can be so contentious. And it's it, it's such a mark of evolution. Like we've grown up that we can break that umbilical cord and move on. Um, and but it's not it's not the relationship that sets you up for every other one. You know, there's such complexity going everywhere. But those that sisterhood and that you know motherhood and the responsibility that comes from that as you look down at the future generations beyond you, you learn you end up with the retrospect that comes from it as you continue to evolve. Like, oh, that's what you meant. Oh, that's what I was like. Oh, that's what this is all about. Is I think really really powerful. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> How much are you hoping that this movie kind of opens? Studios eyes up for more solo standalone female characters in the DC universe to have their own standalone characters. How much do you think this movie can kind of be the gateway to kind of getting more standalone films for the female leads? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that there's such a, a plethora of films that are coming out, and it's and the storytelling is coming from so many different spaces, from video games to short films to animated films to live action films to television shows. I mean, you've got Supergirl. I mean, you've just got so many different spaces that are being occupied, and still the numbers are really dismal. And I think you have like really great organizations like the Gina Davis Institute and so many different spaces that have actually been quantifying it. Like, looking at how many times a woman says a word on camera versus a man. Like, the subtle things that happen that make you feel like, oh, a male's voice is more important to be heard than a female's, just by merit of how many words are said. Um, and so I think that we've still got a very long way to go, and I've obviously I'm, I hope that this film is successful and reaches out there and, and helps to change hearts and minds for the greater good, of course, but I don't think it's any one project's job to have to do that. I think it's all of us as a culture that needs to evolve, and we're seeing that bigger and bigger and bigger, that demand being there, and it's changing. I mean, you come, I've been coming to Comic-Cons for a lot of years, you're seeing the pushback on women being able to have more of their properties out there, to not be harassed and abused just because they're in cosplay. Like, I think we've just seen, you know, that there's no space that cannot be better evolved. Um, and when I see it reflected here, I know that it's hard to be able to so, I mean, at this point, you've done Marvel, DC, live action, animated movie, and show. Like, you've done, like, all of right? it. Yeah, <laughs> which is awesome, by the way. It's so awesome. What is it about, like, this comic book world that really speaks to you? Like, all the different formats, like, what is it that really speaks to you? I'm doing it for so many years in so many different ways. Short, quick answer. It's Gary's breathing over my shoulder. It is, again, I just, it literally, you know, my, my grandmother had all the number one comics and then lost them all. And it was literally one of the like banes of her existence and that was passed on to my uncle who literally would get pencils and like really beautiful papers when he got good grades because drawing was his passion so i grew up like reading comics over his shoulder but he wouldn't even let me flip the pages of my greasy fingers so i understood that comics were sacred texts from a really young age and to see how much it's provided for him and his family over the years like i really respect it as an art form and um, really powerful so to see how this is all grown. It just shows that it's a testament to where you know well, how powerful storytelling is. And now it's like I voiced Wonder Woman. You know, Frank Miller ended up doing a cover like La Borinquena. We're doing a signing for tomorrow. It's a new character. Wonder Woman's in the comic with her. You know, and we're using that to raise funds for Puerto Rico reconstruction, as we call it. And it's like there is there's not just power and inspiration on in the pages. It's, it's actually literally affecting positive change on the ground, which people really need it. And so I, I, I love this world, I love this community, I'm grateful for it. I think it's not even merely been tapped for the resource that it really is and, and the power for good. And, um, and I'm, I'm excited for more and more cons to come. As a, as a Latino, I'm really glad you're doing it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks very much. Yeah. And Linda Carter was Wonder Woman, too. We That's were always right. like, oh, we needed a Latina Wonder Woman. I'm like, we had them. <laughs> <laughs> you were technically Linda Carter.
last spot. Okay. Is that you? Hello. I give you Rosario Dawson. Let me guess who you play. Um, <laughs> Doctor Cyber's assistant. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Howdy. How much responsibility do you feel voicing? Responsibility. Um, I feel like a, a major honor. Um, I, you know, the character of Wonder Woman is one that. I mean, has been passed down for generations. You know, my grandmother loved her, my mom loved her, and it was such different versions of her. Um, and to see how she's evolved now into a character that my daughter loves and fits her perspective of what and how and what female representation should look like, um, and to see her evolve into this space, it's just been incredibly gratifying. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm humbled and amazed that I get to be a part of that legacy. And every single time I see like a hashtag Wonder Woman Wednesday, and I'm like, and I'm proud of that. It's just, it's, it's actually just very exciting. What do you hope to bring to this version of Wonder Woman? Um, you know what? I, what I've always loved is the playfulness of showing some of her naivete with our customs and all of these different things. But what I'm really grateful for is that this iteration of Wonder Woman in this film is coming over many years of the build-up is coming from now a live-action Wonder Woman film that's just broken all records. Um, it's come up in a is particularly strong women's movement that's been really pushing for better representation. And so this film, as much as it goes back to the origin story of Wonder Woman, Steve Trevor coming and landing at the mascara and her leaving and going out into America and the greater world and you know being that ambassador for her culture, um, it's also very female-centered. A lot of the characters are female and the good and the bad side. And, um, you know, so you're going to, you know, the things like Gina Davis Institute like, talks about, it's just like women, even in their own films, there's still less female voices heard when you count out how many words are said by a woman versus a man. And it's infuriating, and that's not the case with this. And we get, into, get to get into the nuance in a modern way, yes, with the old nostalgic origin story, but in a modern way, really explore, like, what does that mean, her mere presence being around, even with the best intention, being all-powerful in so many different ways? How does your mere presence create conflict and confrontation? And then how do you grapple and deal with that when actually you're, you know, you're trying to do good and still negative outcomes come out of it? Um, and I just, those nuances and complexities I think are really important to get into and delve into. And it is the reason why I think we go back to these same stories is for another iteration of it and perspective for us to explore. And the difference between live action and voice, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously you've done a hell of a lot of live action genre stuff, some of you fantastic roles but Thanks. Um, the difference between working on a live action project with you know a voice thing which is a very different beast what, mm. how did you find it oh I love it I mean I've been doing voice stuff for years and some of my favorite actors are people who've always done voice stuff like Tim Curry who's like the best yes um, and any and everything <laughs> um, and so I love that idea of you know these cartoons and animated films and things that I watched as a kid that inspired me and you know you'd, you'd, you'd make that sound again <laughs> you know and like you just laugh and it was always funny and um, you know but now I get to actually do that for real and how do how do you make that sound and, and get that you know um, emotion translated you know it's not enough for me to just think about it and try I actually have to like swing a sword and I have to jump up and down and try different versions of what that could possibly mean to demonstrate the difference between a grunt from you know, being smashed by a mythical creature versus like an effort to, you know, of, of her strength to actual pain. Mm. Um, and it's it's uh, it's awesome. It can wreck the vocals, mm. but yeah. it's it's really fun and it's really awesome. How did you develop the voice? Sorry, go on. Uh huh. I love comic book culture. My uncle Gus is a comic book artist, um, so that was my kind of first introduction into it. Actually, my grandmother was the one who kind of got him into it. She used to collect. I mean, it was for her. She was remember when these you know these these characters first came to life. So she had the number one Superman. She had the number one of all of these different ones and lost them all. If you can oh, imagine. I'm embarrassed. I'm we don't talk about that at no, all. No, no, we don't. Tragedy no. in our family. <laughs> um, and uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's amazing that, you know, my uncle who found a passion for it and loved it and was drawing Spider-Man in his room as a little kid, then ended up getting to actually draw for Spider-Man and, 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 you know, and, and DC 
creative world and in the independent you know publications as well and create a whole life over it and to see how much it's grown like I remember you know he's the one who introduced me to Frank Miller and Neil Gaiman and all of these incredible people and so then you know when Sin City the script comes around and everyone's looking at it like I don't know what that is you know this is pre 300 pre really like the huge tentpole co you know comic movies that we're doing it was like I absolutely knew how awesome this was gonna be and then here comes my uncle to visit on set and they're talking about like blue pencils and special papers and stuff super nerdy and it's just really wonderful to see where Frank's gone I mean now you know I'm voicing Wonder Woman Here's the man who brought us Dark Knight, and you know, then he comes and draws a cover for me for this short um, that I wrote of a new character called La Borinquena. Um, at, at, and Wonder Woman actually they lent Wonder Woman to the cover so it could ha have a better sell, and then the money and from proceeds from that went to help with the reconstruction on the ground in Puerto Rico. Like it's just the power of comic world has been something that's been really tremendous in my entire family and to see it on the grounds really and to see how big these cons have gotten and you know like again like Neil Gaiman's Sandman inspired short death is in here with Wonder Woman like it all just feels like the universe is combining in some kind of way and it just you know is one of those reminders that I'm doing the right thing I'm on the right path and, and I'm part of one of the most incredible things that all of us share which is storytelling and it's powerful. Go for right. it. Um, Robin, we've heard a lot about um, from your directors and producers about how open-hearted you are and also like, what a warrior you are. And how oh, you're word? <laughs> All right, you can send the check. Um, <laughs> and so I'm just wondering if you always kind of felt a kinship with her or if it's something that's grown over your... With Wonder Woman? With her. Yeah. I've always definitely felt a kinship with her, but she's always been an interesting kind of character because there's uh, a line with her, like, you know, Wonder Woman would kill. You know, and you know she's got that olive branch that she'll extend um, with diplomacy and being a great ambassador. But she's also got that sword in the other hand and willing to go to battle. And I've always thought found that very fascinating, especially in contrast with some of the other characters. You know, Superman wasn't that guy. He was a goody two shoes. And so, there anything could kind of happen in a different way with Wonder Woman um, than some of the other ones that I grew up with. And. I loved that. I loved her mythical, magical kind of origins in this Amazonian world of powerful women and her sexuality and like just so many, the weird origin story even of just the people who created her. I mean, it's yeah. really wild. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, it's just an interesting deep dive into our culture and into our world and, and um, I'm grateful to that she's still around to to impact people for the, I think, the greater good. But there's nuance, there's complexity, and that's what I like. I know Gary wants to ask you one very quick question. Go. Do you use, do you use props when you're creating the voice? Do, no you, do you hold a sword or, I or a shield? Or I just sword. wondered if, you know, the fake sword, sword and maybe it's a little all shield. That, but I'm like <laughs> running in place and like I'm really, I get into it. For there's sure. nothing like watching Rosario in the film. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Listen, so thanks again. Fun. Thank you very much. Really so when she isn't, when Thank she isn't you. doing that, she sees me with the camera. It's all in the local. It's great fit. She's amazing. Thanks again. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.